So for question three, we have a card is taken at random from a standard deck of 52 cards. Okay, this is what we normally play with. What is the probability that you'll draw out a seven? So the first thing to do is consider what is in our pack. And we can see that we have four sevens. One, two, three, four. So we count them up. That's your favorable outcome. So there are going to be four of them. And the total number of cards is 52. So simplify that down to be one out of 13. Okay. And for a heart, a heart here, how many hearts are there? Look down here. These are all the hearts. It doesn't tell you in particular what it wants from the hearts. It just says a heart. So any of these cards is okay. So in this suit, there are 13, as there are 13 in every suit. So 13 hearts out of 52 total will give you one out of four when you simplify that fraction. What about the next one? A red card. So you consider how many red cards you have. There are 13 here. There are 13 there, right? So we have 13 in both. So the total will be 26. So 26 red cards out of a total of 52 will give you a half. So the chance of a red card and a black card is equal. So they're equally likely outcomes, red and black. How about a red six? So let's look at where the red sixes are. Uh, we have a six here, which is red. We have a red six down here. Okay, we have two outcomes, which are red sixes. So we write that as two out of 52, which would be one out of 26 when you simplify. So you should practice simplifying your fractions. Uh, don't write them as decimal because some of them are going to have to be rounded off if you do that. We don't really want to round off because it adds a bit of um, inconsistency. Like keep it as, for example, one on 13 rather than rounding off and giving some other number, which is not exact. Okay, well, I want the exact values, which is more preferable in these kinds of questions. Okay, in question four, we got the faces of a rectangle a regular tetrahedron, which is a four-sided die like this, made up of equilateral triangles. So they're numbered one to four. So you may have one on this side, two on that side, and three and four on the other side. So I want to know the probability of throwing a two. And on this die, there are only four numbers, one, two, three, four which is your sample space. So these are the only possibilities here. So your chance of a two is going to be one out of four. Okay, and similarly, three, there is only one three, so one out of four. A one, two, or three. Remember I mentioned that or in mathematics refers to addition. So this is the probability of a one, plus the probability of a two, plus the probability of a three. So that's three quarters. So that's the chance of getting one, two, or three. So 75%. And an even number, the even numbers are two and four. So that would give you two chances out of four and simplify that to a half. Okay, and question five, you want to roll a fair six-sided die. What is the probability that the number you get is a five? So the numbers on the normal die are one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's your sample space. And your favorable outcome in this case is a probability of getting a five. So a five here is there. So there's only one five, so this must be one out of six. Part B, an odd number. Which are the odd numbers? 
one, three, and five. These are the three odd numbers. So that gives you three out of six, which is a half. A number greater than one. So this is important, more than one, you don't include one. So greater than one would be two, three, four, five, six. There are five numbers there. So that would be five out of, out of six, okay? So highly likely to get a number greater than one. A multiple of four. Now this refers to the multiplication table. So these are the numbers four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. And in your set of numbers, that's, that's only four, this number here. So that would be one out of six. Okay, in question six, Ishmael writes a computer program that produces at random one of the digits zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What is the probability that the program produces an even number? So the first thing to look at is how many numbers? We have zero to nine, so there's gonna be 10 numbers as the total. And we want an even number. So the even numbers in this case are zero, two, four, six, and eight. So we have five numbers. We're gonna have five numbers that are even out of 10 total. So that's a half. So you have a 50% chance of taking an even number when we include zero as even. In part B, a multiple of four, so recall that multiples of four would be four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. And we would need four here and eight. So there are two multiples of four, four and eight. So we'd write two out of 10, which is one fifth, okay? C, a number less than seven. So which, how many are less than seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven numbers less than seven. So that would be seven out of 10, which is 70%. A multiple of five in the same way with multiples of four, multiples of five would be five, 10, 15, and so on. And that means we only need five because there's no 10. So this would be one out of 10, which is one tenth. So in question seven, in Hannah's purse, there are three, three one pound coins, five 10p coins and eight 2p coins. If she takes a coin at random from a purse, what's the probability that you'll get a one pound coin? So first thing to consider that each coin has the same chance to be selected. So the one pound coin and the 10p coin and 2p coin each has the same chance, even though there may be some difference in the size of the coin or the weight of the coin. So total coins, we're gonna have eight plus five plus three. That's gonna be 16, isn't it? 16 coins in the purse. So what's your probability of a one pound coin? Given that we have three of them, so there's three chances out of 16. That's it, three out of 16, we don't need to simplify that. A 2p coin, there are eight 2p coins. So half of them are 2p coins. So that's gonna be eight out of 16, which would be a half. Not a one pound coin. So not a one pound coin means 10p coins and eight, uh, two p coins. So that's gonna be five plus eight on 16. So everything that is not a one pound coin, it's all the others. So that's 13 out of 16, like that. And it's actually the opposite of this one, isn't it? This is a one pound coin, three out of 16, not a one pound coin, would be one minus three out of 16. And that's another way you could have done this question here. You could have done one minus uh, 
one pound coin. So it's one minus three on 16, which is 13 on 16. That's another way you can do that question. In D, a one pound coin or a 10p coin. So one pound coin, there are three of them. So that's three out of 16 and or is plus a 10p coin. 10p coin, there are five out of 16. When you add them, you'll get eight out of 16, which simplifies to a half again. So in question eight, again, we got your pack of cards that we saw on a previous question. Note that there are 52 cards in each pack, no jokers allowed. And we wanna answer these questions down here. So the first question is, what's your chance of drawing out a heart when all the cards are randomly mixed up on the table? So your chance of a heart is looking at how many hearts there are, the bottom row there, there are 13 cards. So there's 13 hearts out of 52, which will be one out of four. So there's a quarter of a chance of drawing out a heart. Part B, the seven of hearts. Now we got hearts and seven of hearts is here. There's only one. Okay, don't include the others. We want the seven of hearts. So that would be one out of 52. We'll come up a little bit. Question C, a club. So for the clubs, there are 13 clubs in total, the black ones up here. So there are 13 clubs. Out of 52, which again is one on four, a quarter. So the next question is a black four. So how many black fours are there? There's a four of clubs and the four of spades. So that is two, two cards out of 52 which is one out of 26 when you simplify. How about a black ace? So a black ace is here and here, similar to, well, the same as a black four. A black ace would be two out of 52. So that's also two out of 52 which is one out of 26. Now a five or a six, let's have a look at five or six for the next question. Five or six, where are they? Five, six, five, six, five, six, five, six. So there's eight cards, eight possible cards. You can have five from any suit or six from any suit. So that would give you eight cards. So this is gonna give you eight out of 52, which is gonna give you two out of 13 when you simplify those. Divide both top and bottom by four. How about an ace? The ace is made up of four cards. One, two, three, four. So there are four aces. So we'll write that as four on 52, which is one on 13. And the last one, a picture card. So the face cards, how many do we have? Three, six, nine, 12. So there's 12 chances, 12 possibilities for taking out a face card. So this would be 12. 12 out of 52. And that was simplified to be three on 13. So still not even 50%. We only have 12 out of 52 for a picture card. 
So question nine, we want to shade this spinner such that getting a shaded section is double the chance of getting a wide section. So the way I would approach this is I would color in two first, like this. So this two would be double this one here. So this one is not shaded. And then I do the same again. I color two, I leave one. I color two, I leave one. Then I color two, then I leave one. So you can see that at any particular section, if you compare this section here, that quarter, that this shaded area will be get double the unshaded area for their probability of getting selected. And the same for any other one that you want to compare like this one here. And that's the same on the other side. So the shaded area is giving double the probability. Right, and the other one, can, we can color that yellow because that's the opposite side. So the shaded area has a twice the chance of getting selected as the unshaded area.